Hello and welcome to Sports Opinion, the weekly sports talk show on Channel 18. That's Public Access TV. My name's Dirk Keller. Bob Boyd is here. Yes. Pat sir. White is here. And as always, Earl Murphy is here. Yes. Earl Pearl. And I just have to start out and say, I don't remember the last time it's been so great to be a Hawkeye. Boy, well, it's always sure. great to be a Hawkeye. So great. Some weeks are better than others. <laughs> this, 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 this week is, wow. uh, and it's not just men's basketball, and it's not just women's basketball. I mean, it's there's just a lot going on. Yes. And right now it's all good. Uh, not only did the men beat Indiana last night on the road, but they've won five in a row. Uh, not only did the women finish second in the Big Ten and undefeated at home for the first time in how many years, Pat? Since 19? 1996. Uh, 96, so that's 19 19 years. 19 years. Uh, Yeah. We've, uh, we have, the the Hawkeyes have the Big Ten Player of the Week in both men's and women's basketball. Aaron White won it for the men, and Sam Logic won it for the women. Uh, Aaron White is on a tear. He's doing what seniors are supposed to do, step up, lead by example, he is averaging over the last three games right around uh, 24 points a game and 10, 11 rebounds a game. And uh, getting verbal and showing great leadership. Yeah. Uh, and he's shooting free throws just great. Oh, wow. Yeah. Last night he was. Yeah. Nine for 10, I believe, last he, night. He's been amazing at, at the line. Uh, one, of, one of the sidelights of last, highlights of last night for me was I finally found something to agree with Dan Dockage on. The flop. No, the failure oh. to put Aaron White on his first team All Big Ten. He he admitted, he admitted uh, it partway through the first half. He said, "I may have made a mistake there by not including Aaron White on my first team All Big Ten." I when did they vote? Absolute on that? Yeah. one. They this yeah. one. This oh. wasn't a vote. It was just ESPN. It was just, oh, package. I see. They had him pick a team to show their pictures and give them something to talk about. Yeah. Well, talk about senior leadership after Aaron White called that meeting the Monday after the Minnesota and Northwestern losses. They've been on a tear and, you know, Iowa hasn't won five Big Ten conference games in a row since 97. Correct. Right? Correct. And I heard something on the radio this morning, and I don't know if you guys could verify this, but they haven't won six Big Ten games on the road for 28 years. Correct. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Winning on the road in the Big Ten is tough. And yes, it is. Yeah. That's mm, it, it's it sure remarkably yeah. well this year. They really have. And one, one of the things last night that I'd love to hear the conversation, and I think this was also in the first half. I'm not so not sure. There was a timeout, and they came off the court, and White grabbed Olashini by the jersey. Yes. Oh, yeah. And said something to him. Yeah. Had, had his jersey bunched up in yeah. his hand after Olashini had missed a couple of. Yeah. So there you go. He played great too. And he yeah. threw the ball away a couple times. Yeah. Sure. But Ola that, that needs movement might have just woke Olashini up a little bit, Pat. He talked about it in the paper today. Did he? Olashini did, and mentioned yeah. that. Did he say what he said to no. him? No. Just said that after he had messed up throwing the ball away, that Aaron White mm-hmm. said something to him. That's all he said. And that we, it, what he said was, we love each other. Uh, you know, yeah. One yeah. of the other things about last night that just amazes me is Peter Jock was horrible in the first ten minutes. First he, half, he, he couldn't throw the ball to anybody in our team. He kept falling down. Yeah. He couldn't make a shot. And Fran, who you would tend to think not the most patient person coaching the sidelines. Was unbelievably patient with him, and it paid off big yeah. time. Yeah. He had five turnovers himself, didn't he, in the first half? In the half. first half. Yeah. He was just terrible, Bobby. Yeah. He, he couldn't do he couldn't anything stand, right. He couldn't even stand up. Yeah. He wasn't playing good defense. He wasn't screening. <laughs> but, <laughs> but Fran's patience <coughs> came through in the end. Yeah. Amazing. And Marble's going to be honored. Yeah. Well, let's hold on on that for a second. Okay, when okay. Gabe Olashaney missed a couple of point-blank shots in the first half, White got on him, and Olashaney nodded. And, Ola- and White said, there's no attitude back, White said. If I do something wrong, I want someone to jump on me, too. Olashaney responded. He had eight of his 13 points, five of his seven rebounds, and both of his block shots in the second half. The moment you are referring to was in the first half. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I... I think my kids heard some swear words last night when uh, Peter Jock 
kept turning the ball over and falling yeah. down. And, and Gable and Shady. Swear words from their father? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Um, uh, Gable O'Shaney drives me nuts because if he would just slow down his game on the offensive end, I think he would be much more successful. He hurries his shots under the basket. And yet last night, second half, he made some beautiful 10-foot yeah, jump did. shots. Mm -hmm. He did. The, the follow-up dunks <laughs> yep. was, was amazing. Oh, yep. He boy. just needs to slow his game down a little bit near the basket, I think. I don't know what... Coach Fran tells him, but <laughs> Indiana does not have a strong post presence. Nope. No, that's surprising, isn't it? It made made a big difference. They start yeah. four guards and a forward, don't they? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. And their goal is to shoot the lights out from outside. And that one kid, what's his Regard? name? Lestikov. Yogi, Yogi Ferrell. Oh, the guy that made the threes last night starts with an L. I... Well, he he's a fifth year guy from Illinois State. He is, is that where he came from? Yeah, yeah. I think his dad was on the staff over there, and they got Zeiss, fired. Zeiss Loft. Yeah, so he transferred over. This he's a one year wonder, isn't he? Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> well, Tom Crean may be about a two month wonder. Yeah, he's, he's done. He's got to be. Do you think like, he is? Yeah, he's in trouble. Yeah, he's dead man walking. Indiana's okay. not going to put up with the. Kind of, I mean, they were two weeks ago. They were on a roll. Yeah. And they've, yeah. They just didn't look good last night. And we had a lot to do with it. We played great defense. And we're bigger than they are. Yeah. And Our size got a, has been a big advantage lately. Now, who do they host? It's senior day for them this weekend. Is it Purdue? Isn't that the traditional? Probably. I think it is. I think Purdue's going to yeah. whoop them. I believe Purdue, that's another issue, Purdue, as far as seeding for the tournament, Big Ten tournament. Yeah. I think Purdue and Michigan State play tonight, don't they? Yeah. And then Purdue goes over to Indiana on the weekend. Let's see here, Bob. I, I think that that's right, Bob. I think if Purdue beats Michigan State, I think we're pulling for Purdue to knock Michigan yes, State correct. out of competing with us for that fourth. And then we need Indiana to beat Purdue on the tonight. Weekend. It's Ohio State at Penn State. Uh, Purdue at Michigan State. Okay. Uh, and Nebraska at Illinois. So we have the Hawkeyes still have a chance for a three seed, believe it or not. Yeah. But it, that's not going to happen. Well, uh, three, three, Maine or uh, Maryland four, would have to four lose. Four would be a. We yeah, need Michigan sell, State to get beat. Four, four seed game. gives us a double yeah. bye, just yeah. like the women yeah. in the Big yeah. Ten tournament. Yeah. Uh, that would be really nice. I think the Hawks could use that. Uh, we'll see. But this is a really big week in college basketball. Uh, it's a big week in basketball, period. You've got the final week of the regular season for the men's basketball programs. You've got the postseason conference tournaments for mm -hmm. Big Ten and others. You've got high school basketball, boys and girls, which is just thrilling as can be. Uh, and if yeah. you're really uh, not like I am, you can even watch some of the Illinois high school basketball tournament on Comcast Sports. They had uh, small school girls the other day. and. And uh, that was fun. To what media watch. com channel is that? That forty nine? No, it's no. the same one that has the Bulls and the White Sox and what? It's eight thirty two oh, okay. on the high def. High end. def, okay. Um, <laughs> so this weekend there'll be a lot of Illinois high school basketball, and I hate to say it, but it's it can be very entertaining compared to Iowa. It's March Madness times four. Yeah, times four. <laughs> um, so. <clears throat> Stay tuned. The, the, now let's talk. Let's stick with men's basketball right. for a minute. We talked about uh, Aaron White and stepping up as a senior, and I think we're also seeing the reemergence of Josh Oglesby. We didn't see it last night so much. Uh, he pretty much missed everything he shot last night, and I think he got a little gun shy. Well, he didn't yeah. take that many shots last night. Yeah. He was sure, came in and he was sure big against Penn State. Yeah, he was 0 for 3 mm -hmm. on field goal attempts, all of them three-pointers. He played 16 minutes. He got one rebound. He had two, uh, I take it back. No. Yeah, he had two assists and one turnover. Yeah, he, his turnover was passed about, well, passed to the cheerleaders. <laughs> I remember that. I think he was <laughs> trying for a, one of those uh, Dunks where White comes in from the side. Oh yeah, and sailed way, way oh, out. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. um, but he's ma he's made some beautiful uh, yes. dunk passes. Mm -hmm. And Oglesby has, I guess, found his confidence again. I'd like to think so. Uh, I don't know if he's going to be the senior leader we need off the bench, 
but we need that senior le- every team needs senior leadership down the stretch this is when it counts most and mm-hmm. thankfully we're seeing Aaron White emerge uh, I don't know if we can expect that from Gabe Olashaney uh, well I don't know I think uh, this What's is the time that? to shine yeah, this is coach Cream. their last Tom draw Crean Crean uh, yeah, Jim, he, he, Jim Harbaugh's brother-in-law yeah oh that's right yeah, Jim and John last night that uh, oh, yeah. Uh, 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 the Ford White we're talking about. Tom Crane? No, I was Ford. Aaron White. Aaron White uh, is a good, good, good basketball player. He complimented Aaron mm-hmm. White uh, before the game, actually. As it was that right? Well, yeah. you know, Dirk, you you described him as emerging, and I'm not sure I would agree with that term. He certainly played uh, awfully well in the last five games, but some of the things he's about to do mm-hmm. uh, involve a four-year career of excellence. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's going to become our mm-hmm. probably uh, both our second all-time scorer behind Roy Marble, mm-hmm. probably our second all-time rebounder uh, behind uh, Kevin Cooner. In, in fact, oh, Cooner. in terms of Murph, you were talking about uh, free throws, but he's he's been our all-time leading free throw shooter for couple months mm-hmm. yeah 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 and he has a chance to end up as the th- a third I don't think he'll get higher than three all time in the big ten wow wow behind only you'll you'll remember mm-hmm. these names Don Schlunt yeah is the all-time leader and Terry Dissinger uh, is second and he's about to go past he's got a chance to go past Somebody who played for Illinois, whose name I forget. Who did Schlump play for? Indiana. 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 Yeah. 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 Terry Dishinger was Purdue. Purdue. Oh, he was Purdue. And Schlump was in the fifties, and Dishinger in the sixties. Wow. So those are that's pretty high atmosphere. Yeah, and and when I say emerging, he's emerging as that leader. That's that's what I've been looking for he from is. him. You can see he's talking more. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I've been waiting for that. And Much more involved. I was I was becoming concerned. Um, well, right around that Minnesota Northwestern game time, I just didn't see it in him. I don't yeah, know if that yeah. injury in the Wisconsin game was hurting him more afterwards, especially against Minnesota and against. Well, probably not because right before that they had soundly beaten Michigan on the road and Maryland at home. Yeah. Before the Minnesota and uh, Northwestern games, I, I think it's just the <clears throat> up and down cycle that all these teams have. They get hot for a while and then they lose a couple they maybe shouldn't. But uh, this is pretty remarkable. This career for somebody that was lightly recruited out of high school. Yeah. What's the guard's name? Uh, Clemens. Yes, Clemens. He's really emerging. He yes. played a real he's, good he's game. Yeah. Well. He's had multiple back to back to back mm-hmm. to back. Good yes. games, and if without him, I think where we'd be without him. He's played well this year. Yeah, he's picked I, up Gasol. You can almost say that it. about seven players uh, coming off the bench: Olashini and uh, Clemens, and the, yes. the five starters. I mean, they've all contributed. And I think it's safe to say they've all had the best season of their career. Yeah, pretty much. I don't know who hasn't. Uh, Olashini for sure. Maybe Woodbury. I mean, Woodbury's had some great games, and he contributed last night. The guy from uh, uh, Jefferson City Rabbits. Uh, Oglesby. Uh, no. Utah. 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 Yeah. Yeah, he's really coming on. Yeah. He'll be our leader next year. He and Woody will be our leaders next year. And Giselle. Uh, Clemens, yeah. Giselle. Yep. Yeah, they'll yep. all yeah, – hopefully they'll be verbal. Well, But this is quite a change, isn't it, from a year mm-hmm. ago, and we were all after it. Minnesota Northwestern going, oh, no. Here we go again. But, you know, those kids did remember last year, and, and they uh, that, that may have helped them through this whole stretch. I hope they remember Northwestern. Yes. They will. <laughs> that game, and they talked about that last night on TV. And they won last night. Northwestern beat Double Michigan. overtime. Gee, many well, that was senior day for Northwestern, and they were getting beaten badly. And they came back and tied it up in regulation, tied it up again, and yeah. With, uh, with kind of a miracle shot in the first overtime, huh. and uh, but I'm looking. I'm glad it's Northwestern that's coming in here. You know, the, 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 going outside of the Big Ten, there have been two or three really unbelievable comebacks at the end of games in the last Iowa two State. days. Iowa yeah. State, 
Yeah. Kansas last night. Kentucky. And last Kentucky. Night. They were Georgia had them down by ten with about yep. five or six minutes to go. Yeah. Kentucky pulled away in the end. Yeah. I just hope somebody beats them in the tournament. I do too. <laughs> you got to think they will, but you uh, never know. All it takes is for somebody to get hot from outside. I'm hoping it'll be us. Won't that be nice? Throwback to the Tom Davis days. We we get into the tournament, win the first round, yeah. come yeah. up against Kentucky in the second game. This time we knock them off. <laughs> We've got the size to compete. I mean, we they, yeah, that's right. They, they've we got do. some that's big, right. talented oh. post players, but uh, we can compete. You bet. And I'm starting to see a shaky foundation with teams like Iowa State, uh, Kansas, Texas, um, they're Kansas starting to look is, vulnerable. Kansas is young. Yeah. Yeah, but they're, they're Iowa State a little is overrated, I Iowa think. State's a little inconsistent. They you know, are. Iowa's got three big guys that are quite good. Uh, the kid from uh, Sioux City. Woodbury. 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 Noah Shaney. Yeah. And uh, the kid from Jefferson, Utah, 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 six nine, White yeah. six nine. The one, the one I love, and it's happened twice in this five game winning streak, is Utah early blocking a shot out yeah. at the top of the circle or yeah. first yeah. Yeah. It's got to get in people's head. Who's <laughs> thinking? Holy smokes! What's this guy doing blocking my shot? Clear out here. He's got long arms. Oh my goodness! He does. does he ever have long arms? <laughs> he yeah. does. Somebody compared him recently to um, oh, I want, the kid that played for college kid, long hair, mustache. Did he play for Utah or Gonzaga? Mm. I'm sorry. I should have had this written down beforehand. Uh, he's got a lot going for him. He, I'd love to see him get a little stronger, uh, but I don't think that's going to happen. Ooh. Uh, Utah. Oh, well, you got another could, summer weight program. He could get. Uh, what, what's he classified as? Weight wise? Junior. 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 Oh. Yeah. yeah. got one more year, Mark. One more okay. year. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about. Uh, oh, let me. And just uh, as a reminder, uh, Senior Day is actually Senior Morning this Saturday, 11 a.m. at Carver Hockey Arena with Northwestern coming to town. Without a doubt, the last home game to see Aaron White. Gabe Olashaney and Josh Oglesby and, and, uh, is it and Kyle, Kyle Denning, Kyle Denning. Um, and get there early because they're going to do the senior honors before the game. Oh, they are? Yes, they are. Okay. And then they're going to honor the all-time leading scorer for the Iowa Hawkeyes, Roy Marble, at halftime. Um, okay. They're, I don't know what they're doing. Uh, Roy, I, I think it's safe to say, is dying of cancer. He's got... Geoblastoma. He's been here for a week or yeah. a week and a half, and I, he was at the women's game yep. Thursday night. I don't know if he was there Sunday, but he looked awfully thin. He's, yeah. he's lost a lot of weight. He looked tired. He looked stooped. Yeah. He was there for the Illinois men's game, too. Sat right below us, and I saw him like you did. It was the Wisconsin women's game. Uh, his daughter plays for Wisconsin. Um, yeah. It's it's really sad. I think the vision in one eye is pretty much gone. Is that right? Yeah, that was the first indicator that he was sick. Was he mm -hmm. was getting blurred and then uh -huh. no vision in one of his eyes. Mm -hmm. uh, There's at least one tumor in his brain. It may be more than that. <clears throat> How old yeah. is he? Well, he would be in his late forties yeah. or right at fifty. Yeah, right there. That's he played uh, I, I his think last season. Nineteen eighty-seven was his yeah. last season. I think he's. Ten years younger than I am. I'm 58, so I think he's 47, 48. Yeah, um, he'd be right in there. You know, here's the question: mm -hmm. <laughs> Do they do? Should they retire Roy Marble's number? He's the only Hawkeye player to score over 2,000 points. Well, he, why he, not? You know, I think retiring numbers is yeah. a distraction. I don't. I don't think it. Makes that much difference, and I think the the Yankees is an example. I think they're nuts. They have no single digit numbers left now. <laughs> for, for all these numbers, they <laughs> retire. I just think it's silly. And now there are rules that you nobody can wear a number higher than five. You can't wear number eighteen, or you can't wear number seven, because the refs have to be able yeah. to signal one five, one yeah. four. Um, so you, you oh, can't wear. Okay. So there's a limit to the number of uniforms uh. you can have. 
Well, they've retired B.J. Armstrong's number. Well, they retired all the old, uh, uh, those five starters from the 50s, which I, I think in retrospect Fab was five. a mistake. Yeah. And did they retire Ronnie Lester's number, number 12? You know, I, I don't know. They certainly gave him one. I, I don't know if they retired it. I, uh, well, what would be a proper and fitting tribute to guys like Roy Marble, the all-time leading scorer in Hawkeye history? Give him a trip to New York. I, I, <laughs> yeah. I think what they need to do is rethink the historic indicia in the arena. Like, I think all those flags that hang down uh -huh. on the yeah. four corners, I think that's nobody sees those. You can't no. see them. There are too many of them. Yeah. Um, They've, they've got a flag hanging the same size for an appearance in the NCAA as that 1955 and 56 uh, team that went to the Final Four. I, I think they need to rethink the whole configuration. But it's hard when, when you have not only men's and women's basketball, but wrestling, uh, volleyball is in the Gymnastics. same arena. And when they built the arena, they put those plaques around the the top row where the the yellow yeah. bar is mm -hmm. uh -huh. that I think are gone now are they not? Mm, they're still are there. they still there? Yes. Yeah. I, I well, said I, I think I they need to do something to create um, a historic significance either out in the uh, lobby coming in or is that one of them. and Gary they Barta addressed that. He said they want to do something like that, uh, a more prominent some, some, display case. Some places hang uni replica <clears throat> uniforms from the rafters, and there's room up there to they, do they some of do, that. Uh, if they're going to do anything for uh, Street. John uh, Streif? Oh, Chris Street. Chris, Chris Street. <clears throat> uh, they should uh, make a statue of him. But, you know, it, it, it's hard. You get so many people and so many causes. like. I always love the iconic red banners in Indiana mm -hmm. in Assembly Hall, uh, signifying their national championships. Five of them, which we, we don't have. Well, even they have moved away from that. They they've now got banners that list accomplishments, including the national championships, and it's kind of cluttered. Mm -hmm. I don't think it looks as as neat as it used to. But you know, you need an isolated to area to put all these things we're talking about. And uh, do you want them in the arena, or do you want them in the our wonderful Hall of Fame building? I want um, them in the arena. I don't want them in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, well, that's nobody, why I nobody that. goes. Nobody, nobody goes, goes there. Yeah, <laughs> except club members. Yeah, it's just the current club. Yeah, it's a whole, <laughs> wait a minute. We're not supposed to talk shame. about that. But have yeah. you ever been upstairs? Yeah, I have. How many times? Couple of three, yeah. four. One yeah. of them was for a birthday party. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, that was a huge mistake. Yeah. So yeah. Where would you put? I mean, we don't have a lot of wall space, do we? I no. Mean, no. The way the arena is built, yeah. we don't. Yeah. Here's an idea, and I just thought of it while I'm sitting here. But you know how they put all these different advertising decals on the playing floor? Yeah. Why don't you put a replica jersey of Roy Marble and Chris Street and Ronnie Lester and the Fab Five and and uh, B.J. Armstrong. Do well, that. that would be nice, but that's then they couldn't four. sell the advertising. They wouldn't have enough yeah. floor space. So. Yeah. You could do it. Well, it's, a, it's an issue that yeah. would be well to address. For maybe sure. uh, maybe just hang the jerseys up over the opponent's uh, rim. <laughs> Switch it after. <laughs> Some, something like we, we now have two, and it takes up a lot of space, uh, things for contributors. The, yeah. the, when the original arena was built, and then. Yeah. They didn't they, put my name up there. The remod, well, you didn't give it up I did. Oh. <laughs> I did. They didn't right. put my name up there. Well, I mean, that's, a, that's the sort of thing that <laughs> must have given you enough. could do, but I mean, that takes up a lot of wall space, and there's not a wall against the, the arena the way it's built. And, where they have the current display, like you're talking about, Pat, it's in the one corner of the arena where I think gets the least amount of traffic. The main entrances are where you get most of the, or the two main entrances for Carver Hawkeye, and and one of them's the east side, if you will. Yeah. And the others, the northwest or the southwest side. Most of those display cases are on the mm -hmm. northwest side. Say, yeah, I'd yeah. happen to think, I, I, uh, 
Joe and I came down here together, and we in the back of, the, of the, his uh, truck, there was a my chair like this, yeah. and his motorcycle. <laughs> and then he said, he said, "Wouldn't that be a, a wonderful thing?" <laughs> because uh, it, uh, he wants to motorize your wheelchair. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. He thought, thought Earl was going to be riding the cycle. <laughs> Pop a few wheelies. Yeah, yeah. a mean, sissy bar on the back of the yeah. wheelchair. Yeah, yeah, he said, and that, if he got hurt, that oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can see you and Joe in wheelchairs together. Yes. <laughs> Especially if he keeps riding those motorcycles in the, That's right. in the races. Jeez. I thought it was funny. <laughs> well, uh, let's see. Let's talk about the women. Oh. Uh, the Hawkeye women are ranked number 14 this week. They have a 23-6 and record and a 14-4 and Big Ten conference record. Last week they beat a very stubborn Wisconsin team. Well, they were stubborn. They were. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they just clobbered Minnesota. And I think that's the the right way. They battled. They it was kind of a a sluggers contest until oh, what, five minutes, six minutes to go in the game, and then Minnesota just caved in. They had nothing. You left know, I in think the they tank. get tired. I don't think they're very deep. Yeah. And like when Minnesota's shooting a free throw, I don't know if they've done this all year, but the last few games they've been putting Zowie B back down the court. She doesn't even line up yes, for that? offensive rebounds when they're shooting free now throws. She's she still got yeah. 21. <laughs> yeah. But they're not them off of free throws. That's and, half of what she And Minnesota done. was missing. Uh, Shay Kelly missed <coughs> five or six <coughs> free throws. In the second half. Yeah. She didn't miss any in the first half. Yeah. I know because my daughter screeches every and time a opponent she missed, shoots. she missed, is uh, 70 feet away without a chance yeah. to get that rebound. Yeah. So I assume they're just trying to keep her from having to run. Well, they beat Iowa by what, 18 points up there at the barn a couple weeks ago? Yeah, I think the margin was a little misleading. Yeah, oh, yeah. And then we yeah. beat them here by 16, and it was a little misleading, too, because it was a tough battle. But, Pat, you're right. I thought Minnesota tired out, and the Hawks just are like energizer bunnies. They just keep coming at you. Well, and, and there's a pretty deep bench there. To, yeah. You know, we're allowed to give mm -hmm. some people a rest now and then. And I'll tell you what my favorite part of that game was. Did you follow that game against oh, yeah, Minnesota? Yeah. Uh, the nicest, well, two favorite parts. They took the curtains down. They had to. There were ten, almost 10,000 yeah. people there. There yeah. should have been more, but I'm greedy. Uh, it was it's so nice to see that big crowd. Have, have you and heard the, of my conversation with Lisa? About? Well, it is... You know, and some of our viewers know, I've been volunteering over mm -hmm. there since yeah. I retired. And I started in group ticket sales and mm -hmm. creation of events. And then they, I forget what year it was. I think it was the second year uh, that I was doing this. They put the curtains up to shrink the bowl. And I'm talking to Lisa, and she said, well, I understand why they want to do this. And she said, but Pat, I hope to see the day when they have to take them back up. Was this and, the first time? And after the game, uh, Sunday, I went up to her and I said, uh, you know what today was? <laughs> well, she, she started to say, well, I did this, we did that. And I said, today was the day you and I talked about six or seven years ago. They had to take the curtains up. It was the first time. She mentioned uh, that on 90, the radio. I yeah, she did. She yeah. did on her radio show Monday yeah, night. Yeah, yeah. Well, 9,726 yeah. or 46. That's 9, awesome. 9,700. My very, very favorite impressive. part of including, the game. Including, I think, including Earl and Louise. Yeah, I didn't even mm -hmm. know you were there. Weren't you there, Sunday? Sir. Yeah. 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 Were you down low by the tunnel? Oh, up high. Oh, okay. I was next to the girl who puts the camera on. Uh-huh. No, not, not, not. She shoots the light. Yeah. The spotlight. That's it. Yeah. You're right by the railing, right? Yes. In top row there? Yeah. Yeah. Well, my favorite part of the game was, what, 25 seconds to the left. Catherine Reynolds Catherine. gets the pass yeah. from Sam Logic. <laughs> and the whole crowd's going, shoot! <laughs> and she puts it up from deep in front of the Hawkeye bench and hits a three just as pretty as you please. Well, and the place Lisa, erupted. Oh, it did. Yeah. Lisa was trying to call time out. Isn't that something? <laughs> and you can, if you look in the highlights, even though still, the camera stills, there's Lisa, big T signal with her hands, and Catherine's just letting go of the ball. Uh, she was trying to get a timeout so Catherine could come out to the applause of right, the crowd. Right. Of course, the crowd. They say Lisa Bluter mentioned on her radio show. You probably heard it, Pat. Where 
she has a picture of that with Catherine uh, Reynolds shooting the shot in the timeout. Yep. Uh, that she's signaling, and uh, I think she was pretty much indicated she might get that put on her wall. <laughs> I love it. It's, <laughs> it's a great picture. It's uh, making she's the rounds now. on uh, social media. Yeah, right now. she's quite a woman. Lisa Bluter, mm -hmm. we're very she's fortunate a wonderful to have job, her. That's for sure. She's a great individual, a yep. wonderful coach. And her husband has to be a jewel. He takes care of the kids. Yeah. I don't know how many kids she got, two or three. At least three. Three. Three? Yeah. Well, she's well, got a great staff. I was going to say, she has Jan yeah. Jensen, Jenny Fitzgerald, and they've been with her the whole time that she's been here. And now Lacey Goldwire is on her staff. Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah. She's, uh, but the husband is really important. Sure. Oh, absolutely. Sure. Uh, the the women have accomplished things this year that haven't been done in a long time here in Iowa City at Carver Hawkeye Arena. Mm -hmm. um, as I mentioned before, Sam Logic is the Big Ten Player of the Week. I don't know how many of those she's won. Um, I was I and also they came out with the um, the All Star uh, all all Big Ten team. all Big Ten teams. Mm -hmm. Sam Logic is uh, on the first team. There the was one selection. no. There was one who unanimous, did vote. unanimous by the coaches. There was oh. one voter, media voter, who didn't vote for. Is and that do we know I'm, who that is? It, it was somebody in Madison. Hmm. Yeah, That's her home she's state, a Wisconsin girl. Her home yeah. state. <laughs> um, oh, well, they haven't been watching basketball. Sam Logic is the only player in the history of Big Ten women's basketball to score at least 1,400 rebounds, or it's 1,400 points, have 800 rebounds, 800 assists, and 200 steals. Since the Big Ten started playing women's basketball, nobody's achieved that. And the, the significance in those numbers is primarily equal rebounds and assists, uh, which is when, pretty when impressive for a point guard. Uh, uh, early 70s, 73 yeah, or 74. She's just amazing, and she started every game. I was trying to explain this to my daughter uh, that night. She has started every single game that's been played by the Iowa women's team since she got here as a freshman. And we knew when she came in here she was something special. Never she missed. Was, yeah, McDonald's All-American. Uh, you knew the minute you saw her play that she was special. Her, uh, The way she carries herself, the, the look on her face, uh, just the demeanor on yeah, the court. In that last game, didn't we hit quite a few tens? Uh, uh, threes? Threes. Yo, yeah, Melissa Dixon hit, yeah. a, hit a boatload of them. She had eight yeah. in that last game. Melissa Is that eight, right? Eight, and Witt had two, and I think mm -hmm. Sam had one. Uh, Allie had one. Finally, yeah. Allie didn't have a good game against. Did uh, you notice she had her hand wrapped again? I did. She's been without that for a few games, but... Her hand is wrapped again. Her hand, her shot looks terrible. Well, her, her, the problem is her hand. Uh, yeah. Is it the wrist? It's a tendon. Oh. Uh, which uh, I suspect she's going to have to is she, have it, addressed. Or she hand? Yeah. Yep. Surgery maybe after I the thought, season. Yeah, everything. that's that yeah. would be my guess. Now, well, she's had a great season. At though. the risk yes. of yeah. at the risk of jinxing her. Yeah. <laughs> um, there, you got to keep in mind. Today there's a shot clock, uh, three-point line, smaller ball. The, the woman who holds the all-time scoring record for the women, and not too far from Roy Marble, is a little, a little over 2,000, 2,059 or something like that. Mm -hmm. and she was at the game. Cindy Hagajordi. She was at the game. So. I love her. I saw her out there, and I'm trying to tell the kids, she played when I was here. Yeah. I couldn't believe You know, when I, I saw her. I was going to did uh, yeah. Sue Beckwith. Yeah, who was out the there? Sue Beckwith uh, was her player. Uh, but anyway, Allie is going to end this season at very close to a thousand points for two years, and she doesn't need to increase her right. scoring average very much to take a run, barring injury, to take a run at Cindy's all-time scoring record. Do you know what Cindy's record is? Well, I think it's two thousand and fifty-nine or thereabouts. Uh -huh. It's not. It's less than twenty-one hundred. More than. 2000. Now, she had a lot of rebounds too. What about the they girl? played fewer games. What too. about the girl from Solon? I think maybe it wasn't. Lindsay Meter? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. She was a good player. Oh, she was very she good. She was up there. She was yeah. very good. She's yeah. the, she held the three point record until Melissa uh, smashed it. Uh, 
this year. <laughs> yeah. I mean, isn't Melissa Dixon like at 319 or something like that? She's, She's yeah. all-time leading three-point shooter. She's second team all Big Ten, along with Allie Dister. I was surprised Allie got second team. Uh, and then, of course, excuse me, Bethany Doolittle, also second team all Big Ten. I was disappointed that Zowie B got the player of the year. Yeah, I was too. I, I think, don't think I that's think, right. I think Sam's the player I think of the year. I agree. agree. She's earned it. I'm bi- we're biased. We're, yes, we are. We're prejudiced, but, but it took four years for Sam to impress people. She was uh, first team all Big Ten last year. Zowie B wasn't. And I know it, this is for this year, but I don't think Zowie B was that consistent uh, over the course of the season, and Sam is the definition of consistency. Well, did she finish second in the voting? I don't know. We don't know. We that. don't know that. Okay, I would assume she did, but I don't know, I think we'll ever find out. Yeah, uh, but she's going to be a first-round draft choice in the WNBA draft, and Sam. Oh yeah. Um, they don't make a lot of money in the WNBA. They make bigger money overseas in places like China and Japan mm-hmm. and Europe and. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what she does uh, because huh, she's Certainly. one of a kind. And I think wherever she goes, the fans are going to appreciate her just like we do here. And it's it's hard for me to imagine that they're going to field a team next year without Sam Logic. It's Well, and, and Lisa, you know, we, we've we talked about this a little bit, but we need to remind people that she's over 300 v- victories. Yes, now. good point. And, uh, and As a Hawkeye. Yeah. And still, that's right. I don't even know what her total victories are with uh, St. Ambrose and Drake included. Do you, Pat? 600 and some. Yeah, wow. And that's something. And she's relatively young. Oh, yeah, she's how got a long way to go. Or can't we announce that on TV? Let's just say she's 39. And, <laughs> okay. And, uh, well, she's got many more years to coach. Yes, she does. She's in her 50s. Yeah, I really okay. look forward to what comes next. Uh, the Big Ten. Team will be younger next year. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. But there's talent there. Mm-hmm. There's some talent coming in. Yeah. And I believe in the Iowa coaches. I I fully believe that they know how to coach these kids up. They can. Uh, You're right. There's just something about this women's staff and what they can accomplish over a season, over the long haul. I think next year you'll, you'll see that Christina Buttonham is a heck of a player and uh, Chase Coley has developed uh, quite a bit since the start of the year. Um, and uh, even Carly Moans, who's the other freshman, is awfully good uh, as a rebounder and power forward. Uh, we haven't seen a whole lot of her. But, uh, and I suppose that got somebody a good guard. Well, they have a girl, 5'3", from uh, Goodrich High School, just north of Flint, that's, who's that's probably going to be the Miss Michigan basketball. And they have a girl coming from Wisconsin who I think is the... Way up north? Yeah. Uh, she's 6'4", is she? Port Wing or right, on, right near the lake. 6'3", mm-hmm. is what she's listed as. I want to see Whitney Jennings start hitting her threes more consistently. I'd love to see her hit free throws, period. Well, um, she's, she'll get better. Mm-hmm. She will. Yeah. You know, she's uh, now played <clears throat> five straight games. In the Minnesota game, she played a lot more point than she had in the other four. She's gone five straight games without a turnover. That's great. That's pretty That's amazing. Great. Did you notice who played center for one. Iowa on Sunday against Minnesota? Well, besides Beth? No, Sam, yes, Sam Logic. Well, Sam played the high post. They put her Coach, right at the free the, throw line. The offensive game plan, she wasn't playing center. She was still playing guard, but she was at high high post. They fed her and then she'd turn and figure out what to do with the ball. I thought it was brilliant. It was. It was a brilliant offensive game plan Yeah, by the coaching staff. Wonderful time. Great uh, closing ceremonies after the game for the seniors. They really do it right. They had a nice video tribute to the yeah. four ladies. And uh, I have to say, everybody, most everybody stuck around to watch it. Um, <laughs> did you notice last night in the men's game at Indiana, there were a lot of empty seats before the game was yeah, at hand. But, but they, they started leaving. Oh, they did in early. Droves with and they about were three minutes booing. Yeah. They were booing their home team when yeah. they had the ball on offense because they weren't. I don't oh, know what they weren't oh, doing right, but whoa. maybe they're not trying so to. So you score guys saying enough. Tom Crean is going to be done? He's a dead man walking. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And where I think you, they're going to lose to Purdue. Where did he come from? Marquette. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Marquette. That's right. Yeah. He had a lot of good teams over at Marquette. Yes, he did. He did. And he's recruited very well at Indiana, but his recruits don't stick around very long. Well, that's what, if when they're deciding whether to keep him or not, I don't know what his contract situation is. That'll be the argument that he's got a yeah. young team and they ought to let him stick with his recruits for another year. His buyout is seven and a half million. Oh, well, that might keep him his job. He's gotten more four-star recruits since he's been there than any other team in the Big Ten. And, in fact, if I'm not mistaken, (laughs) he has more four-star recruits than all the other Big Ten teams combined in Crean's time there. Um, That's interesting. Yeah, I just read a story today uh, by Lauren Tate, the (laughs) Illinois (laughs) – yeah, the Illinois – Nazi. Um, you don't like Lauren either? I despise him with all my being. <laughs> That's because he I lives in you, Illinois. I knew you hated no, Illinois. He, he, he hates, he hates you, Iowa. He, he goes out of his Iowa. way. <laughs> yeah. He goes out of his way to swipe Iowa. In fact, last week he wrote a story and talked about the failures of the Big Ten in basketball this year and claimed that Iowa lost. Uh, they were, he was listing all of the weak teams that beat Big Ten schools this year. Yeah, uh, pre-conference season, and he listed Iowa as losing to Northern Florida, and I had to go and look it up because I said, well, no, first off, Purdue, no way. Purdue we, lost to North Florida. We didn't. We yeah. beat it by ten points. Right. And Purdue and, lost to North Florida, Gardner, Gardner, Gardner Webb, Webb, and one other <laughs> school. And, and that, I mean, I don't think it's right, but that's why is um, Purdue is in third place in the Big Ten, uh, and. They, people keep like Joe Lenardi and mm-hmm. who the other the other guy that does all these brackets. They keep listing Purdue as a nine, ten, eleven seed, and I'm thinking, what are you talking about? Yeah. And it's these uh, non-conference losses that they're talking about. Yeah, they didn't really heat it up until they've certainly early in the Big Ten conference. Well, uh, yeah, they, Joe, how are we doing on time? February. And, of course, they've 51 got these two minutes. big guys. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> Those bracketologists or whatever they call them, they... I get a, don't you get a little bit tired? Yeah, I, get, of, I don't even listen to it. Well, Lunardi is the one they say that is... He's money. He is money. He's... Uh, but do we have to read an updated version every, every other day? Or? Yeah. It's after every game, every Ooh. game night. He's got it. Right now, the Hawkeyes RPI after last night is... Uh, I can't remember. Thirty-six, forty-six. One of those two. Must um, be forty-six, as we were in the fifties before. Uh, and then the women. Now we're back to men. Oh, okay. Uh, the women are, uh, you know, they're solid and they're ranked fourteenth. The men still aren't ranked, but if they beat Northwestern, I guess they stop ranking teams after this week, don't they? Once the well, I would think uh, they do it up through the fo- the regular season ends this weekend. Yeah. I would think they'd have one out Monday, wouldn't they? Me? That's what I don't know. Do they rank them before the conference tournaments begin? One yeah. more time? Yeah. One more time. I think yeah. They do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, a lot of good things happening for the hockey men's and women's basketball team. The men or the women will play Friday night at 6 p.m. on the Big Ten Network. Most likely Nebraska, but we'll see. Um, Who's Nebraska play? Illinois. Okay. And then if they win that game, they would most likely play Ohio State, but you'll, we'll have to see. That would be Saturday night at 8.30, again, on the Big Ten Network. Uh-huh. Uh, the Big Ten's going to have uh, not all of the women's uh, Big oh, Ten wait, tournament how games. How many teams are you going to be in? Fourteen. Fourteen. And, what? And four teams have double buys. That's and two just... teams have buys. So uh, we'll just have to wait and see. The Big Ten women's tournament starts Thursday. It's hard, it's hard to do a bracket with a 14-team yeah, league. Yeah. So four, yeah. four teams yeah. have to play a day before everybody else. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, can't yeah. forget to mention, uh, or I want to mention, the Iowa baseball team has won seven games in a row. Wow. They lost their season opener by a run and have since swept the table. And they're going to be at Middle Tennessee State in Murfreesboro or whatever it's yeah, somewhere in Tennessee, Murfreesboro, at Middle Tennessee State. Middle Tennessee State this week, and they've got three games down there. Hey guys, when's the last time an Iowa baseball team started seven and one? Don't know. <laughs> Decades. Bring, bring maybe. Out the killers. Uh, 
<laughs> off to a great start. And he's yeah. a great hire by Gary Barda. We sure he was. Appears to be, and, and they have. If, if people haven't uh, recognized it yet, they've made a really significant physical plant change in plans since Rick was hired. When when they announced his hiring, they also said that part of the agreement was that they were going to build a new baseball stadium out in the so-called West Campus, but mm -hmm. they've now invested a lot of money in putting down artificial turf on the yeah. whole baseball field. There's no dirt. There's no pitcher's mound, home plate, infield. It's all artificial turf yeah. now. And uh, the, the planning includes eventually tearing down the existing stadium and uh, putting a new one in the same, very same position. I don't like that word. It is. I do. I like I it. It's like right that. where it is by I my agree. house. I agree. That location I like is good. There. Yeah. I think it's great. To you stay betcha. In that part yeah, of the that's good to hear. Well, they got the girls, uh, the women down. And, and I think that was part of once Rick got here and began to see the way the physical plant was laid out and the activity. Uh -huh. it, it was his preference mm -hmm. to stay to there. Stay. And to I'd the like to see the women say. come up top too and not be sitting in the floodplain down there uh but that's there's uh, no room up there yeah there isn't not now yeah uh the hawkeye wrestlers number two ranked in the nation will begin uh, the big 10 wrestling tournament this weekend in columbus ohio that begins on saturday morning at 9 a.m there's no tv coverage on saturday but the big 10 network will have the championship round on Sunday, I want to okay. say that starts at two o'clock. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a live. Uh, they'll be live. Now you can always. That's in Columbus. Is that two o'clock Eastern time? That's our time. Our time. Our time. Will they not have it on? How about uh, like Big Ten to go or? I don't think so. There I looked on the Hawkeyes website and they didn't have anything listed mm -hmm. except KXAC. Were you disappointed in the seeds? Or yeah, I was really surprised. I, I'm, I was very surprised that as well as we've done, that we don't, we only have three three number, number one, one seeds. seeds. Yeah, and guys like uh, heavyweight Bobby Telford, number four seed. Yeah, how could that be? He's been number one in the nation until the last two weeks of the season, and I bet he does well. There was one very ironic yeah. seed, and I forget who it was. Whoever our five seed is. He's ranked fourth in the nation. Yeah. And he's a five seed in the Big Ten that, tournament. That seeding is done by a coach's, the coaches meeting, isn't yep. it? So, right. The coaches seed them. I, I was really, really, really surprised at the seeds uh, for a number of reasons. And I think overall it's going to give the Hawkeye wrestlers a lot of incentive to go out and kick some major butt. Uh, does, does that seeding signify that maybe we're not too popular among the other coaches? That's kind of what I was thinking <laughs> yeah. when you guys were talking about. That's a given. That's always a given in the Big Ten. And most of the coaches, the coaches are ex-Iowa are... <laughs> wrestlers. Yeah. Well, look, it, look is... Indiana, Ohio State, uh, Wisconsin, Wisconsin, Wisconsin who else Minnesota. Minnesota. Well, he, not a former wrestler, Rest, former coach. Yeah. I mean, there's the Hawkeye brand is all over the Big Ten wrestling tournament. and. Who knows? Uh, but it yeah. starts 9 a.m., yeah. and you can listen to Mark Ironside and Stephen Grace starting at now about 8.45 on KXIC, AM 800. Okay. They do a wonderful job. They really do. They really bring it to life. And, and Mark's always entertaining. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Let's see what else. Oh, we got high school basketball. Yeah. Uh, the Regina girls, uh, who are ended up ranked number 12 in the state, took on the three-time defending state champion, yes. Western Christian, who was ranked number two in the state this year, and gave them a heck of a game. Uh, All-time low scoring point this season for Western Christian. They won 48 to 43. 50 uh, to 45. 50 to 45, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've got 48, 43. That's wrong. Okay. Bob's right. Uh, um, there was a low point scoring total for Western Christian. They had been uh, averaging around 70 points a game. So Regina gave them all they could handle, and it's too bad. But uh, Regina's a good young team. They lose one player off that team, Hannah Stein. And uh, they're going to be There's Crompton a force. I, Crompton's her name? Yeah, Mary Crompton. Yeah. Yeah, freshman. Yeah, she's a freshman. She's really good. Uh, Grace Dumont as yeah. a freshman. You've got a Lehman or two. Lehman is a sophomore. <laughs> you got Kennedy Brown. Brown is a junior. You got. Uh, you've Those also got Cami Verducci. Yeah, she's a junior. 
she'll be back. She's a pistol. She, and these girls are fast. I can't believe how quickly they get up and down the floor. Uh, my son wanted to, he had bought a ticket for the game. He, first he bought a ticket for the student bus that was going to take them there. And then the, they canceled the bus. And then uh, his mom canceled the trip to Des Moines because the weather was so bad. He was so upset. Yeah, that's too bad. <laughs> I said, dear, just use this money and try to get a ticket because the boys, the Regina boys are going back to state next week. That's great. Uh, they are not ranked right now, but their record is 20 and four. They just dismantled West Burlington last weekend. Uh, and they are going to face Western Dubuque, who is 22 and two. Cascade Western Dubuque. That is going to be Tuesday at about 1215. So look for okay. that one. Um, and this is the first time in 13 years that the Regina boys have been to the state tournament. Has it been that long? Yeah. yeah. Wow. yeah. And how about West? <laughs> well, I'm getting to them. The, yeah. the West girls play. <laughs> by the time you see this show tonight, the West girls will have played Southeast Polk. Uh, West High girls are number five in the state. Southeast Polk is number six. Uh, West High girls are 21-2. and two. Southeast Polk is 17-6. and six. And... Um, We'll see how that turns out. should be a heck of a game. While we're talking about Southeast Polk, we should put in a plug for one of our viewers and a, a good friend of uh, Bob. Yeah. Uh, Jerry yeah. Mitchell. Jerry and Patty Mitchell's granddaughter plays for Southeast Polk. And she got 19 points in the uh, sub-state final. Yeah. She came off the bench. She, As a sophomore. Yeah. And last year she played in the state finals. A Dowling one beat uh, Southeast Polk by eight points. So she's, she's quite a shooter. She must be. Yeah, she's she a three-point specialist. Huh. Must yeah, that's what I tell Jerry Mitchell. <laughs> Gets that from uh, her grandmother, <laughs> Patty. <laughs> and, but they're they're supposed to leave for Florida. Uh, they've rented a place down in the villages, and they're supposed to leave. Postpone their trip to go. Yeah, to they they postpone their trip a week to go to. It's worth state it, tournament. Jerry. It's worth it. Yeah, that's right. It'll be it, worth it. It is indeed. Mm -hmm. uh, the West High boys won last night handily uh, against Cedar Rapids, Washington. They played in the uh, U.S. Cellular Center downtown Cedar Rapids. They had a boys doubleheader. Um, John Linmar, 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 and Linmar and Kennedy. And yeah. Kennedy beat Linmar. Yeah. Yes, by four points. Yeah, yeah. So uh, West High will be headed back to state and uh, defending their three-time state championships. Uh, on uh, do we know? Do we know when they play? A week from today, I believe. Wednesday, I believe, yeah. And they play uh, Sioux City North, Sioux is City it? Sioux City North, yeah. Uh, they, when was uh, set up as in there? I think it'll be the same schedule as the, the girls, which it's, four, well, it won't be the same schedule because they're... Is that it, right? Mm -hmm. No. What? It's on the front page. Front page. Well... Boy, North. The West High boys team is just a machine. One o'clock. And, and week, no, week uh, no boys basketball team. One o five, March eleventh, one p.m. Yeah. March eleventh. Uh, that's a week from today, Pat. You are okay. so correct. Sioux City North has a record of fourteen and nine. Well, that won't be much of a contest. Would I wouldn't think so. Yeah. I don't think West High is going to get much of a contest from anybody. I agree. Uh, I'm no expert. They're good. They're really loaded. With, with Let's hope one, they can win. With only one senior straight. in the lineup. Never been done. And we're going to have the uh, West High assistant coach at our final Monday morning quarterback on Monday. You're not going to be there, though. No. Uh, Gordy. Gordy. Uh, we had him on the show a couple of years ago. Yeah. And he I hope to get him back. Quite a coaching resume. We like to have the state title winners here on our show at Sports Opinion. That's right. We'll see if we can get Bergie to come in with the uh, with the trophy. Uh, we had Marv Cook now four years in a row. He forgot his trophy though this year. Five years. Well, Is it five years? It yeah. all runs together in my head. <laughs> Bergie's put together quite a record over there. Boy, has the other. West He's only boys. two uh, victories away from his 500 victory. Is oh, that it? right? They're 22 and 0 now. Or I'm sorry, 23 and 0 now. Yeah. Uh, and they're just a real treat to watch. They're so fundamentally sound. And they just keep bringing young kids oh. up. You've got young McCaffrey, 
think they've got a freshman on their varsity team again this year. Young Lowhouse. Um, young Lowhouse. They're all going to UNI. Yeah, yeah. unfortunately. Sure they end up. <laughs> unfortunately. We know one of them's coming yeah. to Iowa. Yes. In fact, we know McCaffrey. two of them. Two of them, because there's an eighth grade McCaffrey that's, that's right. also coming to that's Iowa. That's right. He's something else, too. 6'4", eighth grade. Goodness. Man. Is that right? Oh, yeah. He's dunking in eighth grade. <laughs> <laughs> now, he's he's a year older than most eighth graders. They held him well, that's back. that's all right. That's right. It's all fair. Is he playing point guard, too, or is some other position? Uh, I don't know. I think he probably plays anything he wants to. Uh, yeah, when you're that size in eighth grade, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Well, I saw a uh, Merritt McCaffrey's picture in the paper this week as being on a team that won a grade school championship in a Cedar Rapids tournament. My daughter played yeah. against uh, – is she the only daughter they have? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It must have been her, then. The youngest one is a boy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, up in North Liberty last Saturday, my daughter's last game, and yeah. uh, the McCaffreys were there, and uh, the kids, uh, mom and dad weren't there. Yeah. Um, uh, you know what else is going on this weekend? The Big Ten Indoor Track mm-hmm. Tournament, mm-hmm. and that's being held in Ohio. It's not Columbus. I was talking to Raf Monday at lunch, and uh, he <coughs> said there's a... Is it hosted by Ohio State? Yes. They've got some new place in... North of Ohio Columbus. State does, or there's just a facility of some sort. I, you know, I didn't clarify that with him, hmm. uh, but it's a. He said it's a wonderful indoor facility. It's perfect for everything they need. Yeah. Um, hmm. uh, I don't know when they're leaving. I don't know when it starts. I think it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, I just saw. I was at uh, Timmy Flynn's Red Pepper Deli for lunch and uh, saw one of the track coaches in there. So they haven't left yet. Yeah. Um, but that starts this week, and I notice it's not on TV. Nothing. It'll be on reruns, I'm sure. Uh, that's what they like to do with track. But mm-hmm. um, I checked the schedule, and it's it's not on there. Um, so Big Ten indoor track, I I love it. I love the Big Ten track tournament. There's just so many great athletes all at one place doing all kinds of different things, and being the son of an old track coach. Oh yeah. You know, I, it's right up my alley. So. Lot going on this weekend, um, and then next week we'll have a lot to talk about. We're going to have to take a break after next week's show because we've got spring break coming mm-hmm. up, and uh, uh, so maybe next week we will. I guess we won't know what our NCAA picks will be just yet because the Big Ten men's tournament will just be starting. I'm anxious to see if the women get to host the first and second round yeah. of the NCAA we tournament hope so. again. Lisa seemed pretty confident of it. Yeah. What do you think, Pat? Well, I think if they uh, play well in the tournament and keep their current ranking, they're ranked 14th right now. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh, they'll they'll host. But a victory uh, or two would be nice. Yeah. Or yeah. Three. three. Or three. Yeah. Three would be even nicer. That would be. that would mean they're the Big Ten tournament champs. Yeah. They've beaten Maryland probably. Uh, Maryland's just. They're almost superhuman. I, I personally, <clears throat> I don't think this is a, a good idea. The NCAA has made a change this year to go back to a, a former way of uh, picking sites to wait right. wait until uh, the week before the games start to pick a site and give 16 <clears throat> teams a home court advantage. The 16 best teams mm-hmm. in the country uh, won't be playing on a neutral site. And uh, is. High School Athletic Association did the same thing by giving mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. site advantage to, like, West High uh, mm-hmm. playing at home. I don't think that's fair. It's but not. No, they, they do it to get more revenue, bigger crowds, more they have revenue. To. I, uh, yeah. And the women's tournament to, looks at our attendance, which is up this year. We we had an average per game of better than 5,000 this year, which is terrific. Yes, that's great. I think we're... Last year we were 16th in the country. This year, we last I saw, we were 14th or something. About like what that. our national ranking is. Yeah. Well, we're out of time, but I want to thank everybody for tuning in every Wednesday night yeah. at 7 p.m. on Channel 18 to Sports Opinion, and every Sunday night at 6 p.m. on Channel 18. You can go to patv.tv and catch any and all of our shows. You can go to my Facebook page and catch it, too. I want to thank you for all of your comments we get. Uh, I'll be at the Regina Fish Fry again, serving catfish and shrimp and uh, salmon. How much and appreciate all the feedback. Yeah. I don't know. It's 
10 and 12, they, depending on what you get. They don't let dirt near uh, them. <laughs> <laughs> they shouldn't let me near the shrimp because that stuff is daggone good. Friday night from <laughs> five day, right? Oh, it goes longer than eight. Does it? Yeah, okay. absolutely. On behalf of Bob Boyd, yeah. Pat White, Earl Murphy, I'm Dirk Keller thanking you. And remember this, either you're a hawk or you're not. Go Hawks. Knock them all out of the park. Right. Amen. I, I think